welcome to another episode of Hobby Adventures with me, NS Modeler Tim. All right, I am stoked for today's episode, okay? As if you cannot see it, haha. -ha. The reason why I am stoked, I'll let you know at the end of the video. But for today's video, we are gonna be talking about programming the DS64 with the ESU ECOS 2. So what I am using to mount this thing is, okay, so obviously the DS64, and then I'm also using wood screws, six by one and a quarter. Probably would have been good for six by one. What I like about these ones is that they're not threaded all the way up. Okay, the neck here, as you can see, it's non-threaded, so that's good for the DS64. Doesn't always eat it. But like I said, maybe a quarter inch smaller would have been nicer, but uh, that's okay. Okay, so this box right here is actually where the controller is and then this is right underneath the passenger line. So this is the ECOS detector. I figured it would probably be good just to mount the DS64 right behind it. So right here, and then at the same time, I have enough room here to run a power supply for the DS64. So run the cord right through there, underneath there, and into the power bar, which is right there. Um, then at the same time, I have some leads over here for my bus and I can run it right into the DS64, so we're good. All right, so before we go on with the video, I want to just talk a little bit about these two awesome multi-purpose accessory decoders. On my left, I have a DS64. On my right, I have a ESU switch pilot. Both of these devices has four ports. Accessory address is going through one through four. Having both of these accessories decoders, I'm actually gonna be going with the DS64, and let me tell you why. Let's take a closer look at the ESU switch pilot. So the one that I have is the Switch Pilot. This one is good for operating three wired solenoid switches. For an example, the Atlas switches. Now let's say I have a cattle switch. Those ones actually run like a two wire solenoid switch. I'm not really able to operate that type of switch. What I have to end up doing is I have to purchase a separate unit that plugs to the side of this Switch Pilot, which is called the Switch Pilot Extension. Now with that Switch Pilot Extension, I'd be able to wire up a two wire solenoid switch like the cattle switch. And then the second of the switch pilot is a switch pilot servo. Now these ones are specifically only for servos. So let's see why I'm actually going with the DS64. Like I said, this is an awesome product, but there is one thing that's lacking and it's versatility. Yes, the DS64 is more versatile than the ESU switch pilot. So let's take a closer look. There is so much that you can do with both of these accessory decoders. For me, the DS64 won me over the fact that I don't need to buy an extension to run, let's say, the, the cattle switches, because I do have cattle switches. This right here, just talking about switches, the DS64 operates slow motion motors, such as the tortoise or servos. It also operates three wired switches, such as the Atlas switches and also two wired switches, such as the Kado switches. This is what won me over, is the fact that I can do all three switches and not need to buy an extension. So this right here is my winner. All let's right. head over to the ESU ECOS 2 and let's see how they organize their switches. Right down here, as you can see where it says address, this is the actual address number, where it's from like address one all the way through to, I don't know, maybe 250 if your accessory addresses go up that high. So this is pretty much like how all DCC unit talk by using the address. Now with the ESU ECOS, they group it a little bit different. Not only the, as they use the address number, but they also have this little thing over here in brackets. You probably heard me in my past videos talk about this one colon one. Now with the way this works, remember I was talking to you guys on how the switch pilot is. Each device has four ports, just like the DS64. So the first number that you see over here is actually the device number. The next number after the colon is actually the port number. So as we increase, you'll see address two, device one, port two. Next. Address three, device one, port three. And then address four, same thing. This is where it changes us up. Address five, it's device two, port one. Uh, let's change it up. Let's go to, I don't know, let's say 125. Oh, not, not, not that much. <laughs> 125, so address 125. This will give me 
Look at that. Device 32 port one. Wow, that's a lot of devices. And now with that said, I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board and reorganize all my switches. Okay, so I went the old fashioned way. I grabbed my notebook, I grabbed the pencil, and I started drawing. As you can see, I drew up my layout. And then after that, I numbered all my switches. One, two, three, all the way up to number 17. And then over here, I have five DS64, so I wrote five. And then remember, like I said, device two, port one. I'm gonna be using Cat5 cable, barrier strip, and a tortoise edge connector. Basically what this is, is actually gets plugged into the barrier into the PCB board on the bottom of the tortoise switch machine. So this is how it's more or less it's gonna look. And with the magic of video, it's done. Oh my gosh, I wish it was this easy. <laughs> Anyways, so this is our harness right here. The key thing here is actually to be consistent with your colors. Now, let's see if I can do this without breaking it. I started from the left to the right, and I did the same thing with the barrier strip. So we started off with blue, white, and orange, white, and brown. Blue, white, and orange, white, and brown. And to continue all the way right across. So the way that I made this was the same way that I made this. Keeping this organized like this, it's going to help you out in the future. But the main wires that I'm going to be using for wiring up the tortoise switch machines it's going to be the, the two out ones and this green one. All right, now another thing that I'm going to stress is very important is after I soldered all the tips in, the wires to the tips of this edge connector, I went ahead and I put shrink tube around here. Did this just so that it would protect the system from any shorts. Like just in case if the wires come together and they touch, it'll short out the system. So or it might short out the motor, might short out the DS64. You know, that's not the last thing you want. You don't want no, no shorting out. So, all right, so for the sake of this presentation, uh, I just went ahead, I'm using the DS64 because I did mount these underneath. So I have two cables over here in port one that's gonna be going to the DS64. I have my bus line coming in for power. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, plug that into the ECOS, like so. Then I'm gonna take my harness and I'm gonna wire that up. Now remember, when you're wiring this up, you want to also be consistent too. So I'm going to go B and B. Black is blue because I have a solid blue. And then red is left over, and that's going to go into the blue stripe line. We take the tortoise switch machine, and we plug it. Like I said, consistent is key. So all of these edge connectors have numbers on one side, and no numbers or writing on the other side. So I am plugging all of my edge connectors with writing towards where the throw bar is going to be so it's all going to be like this not like this but like this and as i said consistent is key you need to follow this all through all of your switches or your tortoise switch machines all right so that is done and that is basically wiring the tortoise switch machine now having this uh, barrier strip allows me to throw in let me say the wire for the frog, this green one. And then at the same time, I can also wire up some LEDs for the switch light, uh, for the traffic signals on the layout. As well as if I want to, I can hook up directly momentary buttons or switch buttons so I can have them, you know, mounted to the side of the layout and I can operate the switches from the button or from the ECOS. We can head over to the ECOS, turn on the track power and start programming the DS64. All right, so for programming the DS64, as you can see, I took out a accessory out of this spot over here because I'm gonna actually go through with you on how I created this programming switch. Go to the bottom right over here to the spanner. Uh, go to that crooked stop sign with the plus, so this is add an accessory. It's gonna ask us to choose a slot, so we're gonna choose this one right here. Uh, and then start creating. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here, and just whatever, just make a switch. Um, we'll change the name, DS64, program, we'll go down to the next line, and then I'm going to leave this alone over here where it says accessory, go down to the next one, this says one, but I'm going to change it to add, address, 
number one. You want to make sure that this is on address number one, as it indicates over here. We're going to turn on track power. So like the manual said over here, let's press and hold the ops button for three seconds. And it is blinking alternately. Now it says to throw a closed switch. All right, so right now it's enclosed. We tap on the DS64 program accessory address number one. That is open switch. Now, by doing this, it is programming the DS64 to operate with solenoid switches. We don't want that. We want stall motors. So we're going to touch this switch again to close the switch. All right, that's it. Now, come back to the DS64. Press and hold it. All right, so that is good. All right, so we're going to have to program the DS64 for the ports. I, I just added another switch, as you can see over here, fake accessory address number 2, 2, colon 2. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead, press and hold the ID for 3 seconds, 2, 3. It's going to be blinking slowly, as so. So we're going to hit address number 1. It's going to be blinking a little bit faster, so we're going to do address number 2. A little bit faster, 3. And then 4. And then it's going to do the heartbeat pulse, which is good. So let's try out the DS64. Next, we want to do is plug it in since that we oh, to track power off. Sorry. Plug in the tortoise. And let's put all of these accessories on straight. Turn the power back on. Already, see? We saw it switched. All right, so let's see if it actually works. Let's go ahead, press that address number one. Yay, it works. Yay, it works. Like I promised you guys, I would let you know why I'm so excited. Okay, so one of the reasons why I've been doing all of this is because I've been wanting to have Railcom work on my system. My system supports Railcom. Now, the huge problem that I had was actually the N NCE decoders. The NCE decoders are not capable with the Railcom systems. Once I had the uh, Railcom activated on my ESU, ECOS 2, it actually, anything with the NCE decoders, it just did not work. So now this means I can activate Railcom! Yes! <laughs> okay, that was a little too much over the top, but that's okay. Railcom, if you guys are wondering what Railcom is, I'll leave that for another video. Until next time, keep on modeling.